Good morning and it's Lilia from Heal Scotland and we're doing a very special live today. Um, I've got Janice Klein, the effervescent fermenter, joining us on this live to help inspire you um, over the next couple of weeks um, and how you can really feel a lot more clarity and energy and excitement and control, I suppose. And your life morning, Sean. Now, as you know from the Heal Scotland movement, everything that we promote to you uh, is inclusive. There's Janice just coming in right now. Um, so it's the way that you will do that. No answer from you, Janice. Ah, so give me two ticks. Janice is just going to join, but I think she changed the settings in her phone. Um, so find a way um, to uh, just even eat the food that you are currently eating and um, compress that into a window of time. Really, fasting is another superpower. If you um, want more energy, if you need to heal something, it's powerful for people that have had cancer, autoimmune disease, to really rebalance the, the gut. Um, so, and, and but it's also really scary for some people. So intermittent fasting is morning, Mary. Having trouble having hot my hot lemon water. Oh, very good, Maggie. Um, morning, uh, Cami. Uh, so morning, Meg. Great to see you all on here. Fantastic, Janice. I think you're going to have to take your do not disturb off because I think that's why you're not getting on. Here we go. So just find a way for you to manage it because, you know, it's all really about creating less stress for the body rather than more. So, um, good morning. You, let me see. Good morning. How Fine, are you? Thank you. Glad I managed to join. Good. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, sometimes we, you just have to stick to... Oh, I know. Oh, I know. I put the do not disturb thing. I thought that means then that if anybody tries to phone me, it's not going to interrupt the thing. But then I'm like, if I switch that on, does that mean I can't join the video? So I've switched it back off again and just put my phone in mute. <laughs> so. oh. yeah. Good, good. Yes, I know. I've not really looked into mm. the intricacies of that. Morning, me. So fantastic crowd joined us today, Janice, which is just Brilliant. awesome news because obviously we are... Um, so, so, so yeah. passionate about fasting, fermenting, gut biome. Um, so let's, uh, but what I've just been saying is that it's really important for people not to get too stressed out with huge yeah. amounts of change to start with. And we'll talk about simple things that you can yeah. add in along with, even if it's your normal food. To um, It's just really a, from a beginner's perspective, and I know there's people out there that are all over it. People like me who know what to do, but sometimes oh, well, don't we're, do all, it. we're all guilty of that. <laughs> so now, Lily, uh, Lily, I don't even always take one yeah. advice, but never mind. <laughs> I know. Well, I think this is what's nice about doing a challenge like this is that we can all get together. Uh, morning, Valerie. Um, and support each other and share recipes. So I know we talked about this a little bit last night, but can you go back into the detail about the gut biome, the, the farm that is inside each one of us and why it is so important to, for our lives? And yeah, every well, it's, a, it's just a fascinating topic and one, as you say, that I am absolutely obsessed by and have become more obsessed the more I find out. And again, I'm a food scientist to background. The more I find out, the more I want to find out. But it's like there's this teeming um, trillions of these gut microbes that live in our colon, right, in our digestive system. 70% of our immune system is, exists in your gut. So again, it plays a massive, massive role in literally every aspect of our health. There's a massive link between the gut and the brain. And it's not so much it used to be thought as the brain telling the gut what to do. It's the other way around. It's the gut telling the brain. That's where our cravings come from. As I said last night, if you have a, a well-balanced gut microbiome, you tend to crave the better foods because that's a food source for the gut microbes that you have. So that's fibre um, you know, and, and healthier options rather than if you have a what they call dysbiosis and your gut is overrun with candida, bad bacteria generally want sugar. 
So you'll find then that you'll be continually craving sweet stuff, sugary drinks, donuts, cakes, cookies, and it's not you, it's your gut bacteria that call all the shots. There's also another one I found out recently is there's a gut lung axis as well. So with all the COVID stuff going on as well, it's like back up from the gut can be sent up. There's all this communication. It is fascinating. But the way that I look at it is it's like having your own ecosystem in your gut, right? What you want to have is as much diversity as you can. If you liken it to like your gut garden or whatever, if you only have a few species, say you want to get grass, right? Something happens to your grass, you're totally stuffed. If you've got more diversity, if you've got trees, you've got shrubs, you've got high stuff, you've got low stuff, you've got trailing things. If something happens to one of those species, you've got backup, which means you've got resilience. And it's the same in your health, because again, there are so many of these microbes. It is such a complex thing that we're only just getting to the tip of the iceberg of what's going on. Uh, and it is a very complex issue, but the, the, the bottom line of it is, these gut microbes need fiber. That's the fuel, that's what feeds them. If you eat a diet that is really low in fiber, then these gut microbes are not gonna be doing anything. Because as again, as I said last night, who does their best work when they're starving and they've got no food source? Nobody. And these gut microbes, um, different ones like different sort of sources. So fiber is not all about, oh, I'll just go and eat loads of all bran. That's one source of fiber, which is insoluble fiber. There is fiber, and, and again, this is where the plant-based stuff comes in. All plants have fiber. If you're eating a diet that is pretty much meat and dairy-based, there is no fiber, so you're not feeding your gut microbes. But then to go back to what these gut microbes do, it's incredible the number of jobs they do. They fight inflammation. They produce 90% of your serotonin, which is your happy hormones produced in your gut. And yes. Yeah, they make B that. vitamins, they make vitamin K, they make tons of bioactive compounds that uh, uh, that basically affect your health on every single level. So it's your mental health, your skin health, your digestive health, your energy levels, everything comes from the gut. And if you've got skin issues, you, your, your skin is a map of what's going on in your gut. If you've got chronic um any chronic disease, any chronic inflammation, then you need to be addressing your gut because your gut bacteria produce anti-inflammatory compounds. You know, yes. right. Can I just, you've just reminded me of something really important that I wanted to say because inflammation, as we know, it's thought to be pretty much yeah. the root cause of most of our disease. And, you know, this two week challenge is, it's really just about introducing people to fasting and, and the huge benefits there are when you take food out the equation and give body the body back that energy. But there are other ways to douse inflammation. And we know that deep conscious breathing, cold water, even splashing cold water onto your face will calm the vagus nerve because stress also is um, yeah. connected to the gut health. And we know with Joe Dispenza's work that he a lot of the microbiome can change yeah. in real time when you meditate. So much as we're addressing the food and we're going to go into the uh, some amazing ideas from you, there are, are other ways. And I always, it's the straw that breaks the camel's back. But the reality is the one thing that we all do every day is we mm -hmm. breathe. Yeah. We <laughs> yeah, that's good. So these are the two things, you know, that we really, um, I mean, I think, Hippocrates said, commit enough daily sins against nature and you will experience this. And it turns out for, if we're not eating with um, nature and we're not breathing with nature, then we are, eventually yeah. you will get sick. There's really no mm -hmm. other way around it. So in this challenge, um, what I really want people to know is just start yeah. from where you're at. We're not expecting you to go, you know, and it's at this time of year, there's not a huge amount of things actually alive so we're going to talk about things that we can do i would uh, there's two things i'd like to talk about one i think possibly sour cream or something <laughs> like that that everybody can make and then a healthy uh, snack because you had that competition you do just with yourself seeing how many different um, yeah <laughs> things you that's can a get. brilliant game yeah. i love that well, game i'm an excellent yeah. And I think that's a game, I think that's definitely a challenge that we'll do in the future, Janice. Um, so thank you for that great idea. So, but before we get into the, the actual, for, 
the fermentation of foods and why mm -hmm. and how that works well. Can you talk about, and this is a question that's definitely going to come up, a lot of people that have been diagnosed with candida or leaky gut will, will be told to stay away, depending mm -hmm. on who you're working with, to stay away from fermented foods. So can you cover that for us? Who, what do, is there energy that fermented foods Well, do I mean, again, as I say, I mean, fermented foods are really, really powerful because they're full of live bacteria that are going to get into your gut and they're going to do something. If you've got leaky gut, then you've got all sorts of crap getting through your gut. Your gut lining is like a cell thick. So if you've got gaps in your gut lining, you're going to get all sorts of stuff going into your bloodstream and creating inflammation because your immune system will then react to it because it's not meant to be there. Uh, and again, going back to, um, you know, the, the whole dysbiosis thing, if you suddenly start piling in loads of um, probiotic foods, whether it's sauerkraut or kombucha or kefir or whatever else you decide to do, then that's like sending in masses and masses of weak bacteria, which can just create a bit of habit. It's too much too soon. And the other thing is that you have to take fermented foods slowly. It's not a one size fits all thing. Somebody's saying doing 16. Uh, but I mean, it's not a one size fits all thing. And sometimes it's, uh, you know, less is more. And there's a, if you've got leaky gut, first of all, you need to heal your gut. And the way to do that, as I said, is that if you have, there's a group of microbes, there's quite a few of them in your gut. It's a firmicute group of microbes that their main job is to produce butyrate. Butyrate heals your gut lining. In the absence of these guys, your gut is not producing something that's going to heal your gut and people with Crohn's and colitis for example are obviously told to eat a diet that is pretty devoid of fiber right so there's like literally no food source for your gut bacteria at all and what that what happens then is then your gut never heals because you don't have the right tools to do it it's like giving your body the building blocks to do it. And I know because I've had quite a few people who have come along to workshops with Crohn's colitis who have reversed it. And two kids, especially one wee girl, um, Stella, who had, was diagnosed with Crohn's when she, I think she was 10, and her mum took it upon herself to try and help her. And she managed to get off the medication and get all her blood markers back to normal through looking at her diet, through introducing fermented things. The other thing is, Lily, let me just quickly mention this, with the whole uh, leaky gut thing, an awful lot of people cut out gluten, right? Because obviously gluten can be a trigger for people, especially if you're just buying cheap supermarket processed bread. But here's the thing, process, um, most gluten-free foods, and it's a massive industry now, gluten-free, you go down the gluten-free aisle, it doesn't mean it's good for you, right? You could get a bag of sugar and put on it, it's got no, you know, it's fat-free and gluten-free, and people think, oh, I'll have that then. But what happens is, with the majority of gluten-free foods, you take gluten out, they add in emulsifiers, there are two emulsifiers, carboxymethyl cellulose and polycarbonate 80, I think, that pretty much go into all uh, gluten-free foods. Both of these have actually been proven, scientifically proven, to damage your gut lining. So if you think you're taking out gluten and buying gluten-free processed stuff, check the labels because all of these emulsifiers, all of these stabilizers, they start, they'll further damage your gut and it's not going to heal and the other thing I was going to say is yeah. people that have to go on drugs for things, you know, like, like steroids and whatever, if you've got the right balance of gut microbes, they do the same job that the drugs do, but without all the negative side effects. All you get from looking after your gut bacteria are benefits and then more benefits and more benefits. And that's what it comes down to, but it comes down to eating fibre and it comes down to polyphenols and fresh fresh foods and variety, that's what it comes down to. So yeah, if you have leaky gut, you do need to try and, and deal with it, but don't suddenly start piling in tons and tons of um, fermented foods because it, it can be too much. And as I say, what happens is you can end up with World War II going on in your gut because you've got all these good bacteria trying to get rid of the bad ones and you can end up with a lot of, um, and gut, gut issues are it's not a straightforward thing. There's a brilliant book, Anyone, let me just say that anyone who is really struggling with their gut is called Healthy Gut, Healthy You by Dr. Michael Russio. It is, it is the best book ever on gut health. It's all scientifically referenced. It mentions every single gut issue and it gives you plans that you can tailor to suit yourself. So that's a great book. How do you know you? Okay. That's great. Can I just go over a few? You've got so much fascinating information there. Um, and somebody's asking, how do you know you have leaky gut? I'm trying to just yeah. um, look at the questions. But, but, so, but before we, go, we do that, 
Um, I think the gluten-free thing yeah, drives me crazy because obviously when you give people a food plan, they is it, they come mm -hmm. and they ask you, yeah. can I eat this? I can I eat that? Can I eat the next? Gluten-free can be every bit as bad and yeah. sometimes even worse. It's because humans, it's yeah. a bit like fat-free. All you've done is take a whole food and made it into a quarter of a food that the body will not recognise. So thank you for pointing that out. Read the labels. And again, make your own stuff if you possibly can. And we can talk a little bit about sourdough bread and sourdough flatbread as well. Um, so, and then the, 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 the point there about, um, you know, like, just don't go all in. You need to start introducing these things. It's a bit like, you know, a raw food diet. A lot of oh, people well, cannot can handle that at first because they don't have, they don't have the enzymes that are needed to break down the food. So you need to work, that's possibly when you need to start working with somebody, or if you're not very intuitive to try a little bit of the fermented foods and yeah. see how it feels. And this is, you know, I, I talk about this all the time about how we have the intelligence inside to listen to what you're being repelled and mm -hmm. attracted to, to let go of all your previous assumptions around yeah. what was healthy and what wasn't. And um, and then really tap into your own body, and it's a it's yeah. a journey, isn't it? What might work yeah. for you today wouldn't have worked for you last month, and may not yeah. work for you in a few years. You have to go yes. from where you're at you right did. now. So, can, could you now answer? How do you know if you've got? Well, again, gut? as I say, if you feel that your gut's not right, if you get consistent bloating, if you get cramping, if you get pain, if your bowels are not um, working properly. Uh, you, you know, you'll know yourself if you're out of balance. And as I say, gut issues are incredibly common these days. IBS, pretty much one in two people have IBS. But again, as I say, if, if you have leaky gut, you're going to have digestive issues. You'll either have pain, you'll have acid reflux, you'll have indigestion, you'll have bloating, you'll have irregular bowel movements, All any or all of these things. Um, and again, if, if you do have leaky gut, it just means that it's going to set up chronic inflammation because your immune system is going to be firing all the time because stuff's going to be getting through from your gut lining into your bloodstream and it shouldn't be there, which means your immune system starts to fire off. Um, and yeah, and that also is uh, the the common root of a lot of oh, allergies yeah. as well, isn't yeah. it? There's particles in the bloodstream that were never. That's that's what happened to me. I then got sinusitis, had recurrent I sinus infections, well. antibiotics. That usual cycle, and then I, they gave me an operation of oh. my nose, <laughs> and it was all because of my. Gut. I know. I mean, it's just it's crazy how we've separated everything in the body when it's a, it's a one phenomenal uh -huh. ecosystem and things that are happening in the gut can give you yes. arthritis mm -hmm. <laughs> can give you yeah. Crohn's can give you any autoimmune disease your blood sugar levels all of that is coming from the gut and another thing I'd like to bring in uh, and get your thoughts on uh, Janice is you know like when you come to that menopause oh, yeah. age and often you after the menopause women can go and can become very um glucose resistant so you know you can start to you, you really need to eat less carbohydrate or you're going to get your big uh, menopausal middle and how you know that we can be we can inflammation for i'm not sure if you fully understand why but we know that western diet's a big part of it mm -hmm. and stress and competition but um that for some reason but you know that and that what controls the inflammation in the body pre-menopause mm. just stops working and uh, inflammation can get out of control therefore all these kind of hormonal mm -hmm. ca uh, cancers come in not just for women mm -hmm. but it's more obvious i think in women and um, we're very vulnerable at that age so would you like to talk to that the, about the menopause well i mean age? i'm incredibly fortunate I've, I've seen through the menopause with no issues at all other than an odd hot flush when i was 50. at that point i had started doing sort of microbiotic stuff so i was eating quite a lot of like miso and fermented things which actually really really help with that whole changing in hormones um, and uh, I, I as i say had absolutely zero issues at all um, absolutely none. And I know that and so many people just struggle with mood swings, with 
you know, sweating buckets and all of that. So it's that balance thing that's going, it's totally wrong. So again, a lot of the fermented, especially fermented soy, is fantastic because it, it contains things called phytoestrogens, right, which mimic the hormones. So it kind of brings that balance back. And to be honest, people that can, in Japan, they don't even have a word for the menopause because they don't suffer from it because the, the diet that they eat keeps their, their hormones more balanced. And again, that comes back to your gut. Again, because your gut, you know, it continually is like getting rid of stuff that your body doesn't need and, you know, replacing it with stuff that it does need. So it's not a subject that I'm an expert on, but maybe we could do a live in that and I can do a bit more research in the whole menopause thing. But all the fermented stuff that I do, things like drinking kombucha, clears stuff out of your body so that it doesn't cause you a problem. And if you're eating again, going back to you're eating the building blocks that, that your body needs, that your gut bacteria need, and they then can start to work and, and to change things. If you're, you know, have got too much sort of hormones circulating around the body, I mean, your, your body should be able to get rid of them. Or if, it, you know, your balance is the other way to sort of to try and balance it up again. But again, it comes back to eating the right kind of food. Yes. The other powerful thing for hormones is natural yeah. light, um, you know, and sunlight. And, you know, my own personal experience was when I moved to Malta, um, when I was, I think, 52, and had just started going into the menopause. And again, like you, no, I would say the main thing that happened to me was I lost my drive yeah. completely. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but the, when I went into sunlight, my eyesight came back 120, mm. 20, and my penis wow. came back regularly. It was like, it was crazy because I was, I was yeah. living outside and I know my body likes to live in yeah. the sunshine. Lovely, don't we all? <laughs> it, I like to be outside as much as possible. And, um, and I think the reality is now a lot of us, we simply can't be outside because yeah. our job means that we're inside in front of a screen. And even when we understand, again, from the science, that staring at a screen um, makes you yeah. crave carbohydrate. I know. It's that big circle, isn't it? <laughs> it's if I, dopamine levels in the brain and it's all so all of this integration of everything and obviously Scotland's mm -hmm. Wild Medicine the book and um, we're bringing all this information so that we can people can learn to mm -hmm. why you know why we're know. malfunctioning and you know but this um getting these mm -hmm. bacteria um are so so critical yeah. to your mental health if anybody has anxiety and panic panic attacks the first thing I'll do is say yeah. check your gut bio yeah. for the spit test and see if, because it, you, it might not be you that's having the anxiety and the panic mm -hmm. attack, it's the wee beasties inside you going. You know the other <laughs> thing? Well, I see when it comes to the whole weight loss thing, I mean, this is another thing when you go back to the whole count of calories, it doesn't work because they have, what they've done, there's been loads of research done, right? People who are naturally slim have a totally different gut microbiome to people who put on weight. You can have two people they eat the same thing. One person stays like a stick and sit, the other person piles on weight. And they've discovered that there is one, a gut bacteria, it's called Ackermansia, right? And the people who are naturally slim have way more of this. A lot of the people who are really heavy and can't lose weight have like zero of this Ackermansia, this gut microbe. And what that does is that obviously people that are heavier, their body is extracting more out of their food. And it's making and it's making them, you know, obviously put on weight. Whereas the ones who are leaner have got this microbe that seems to magically just pass stuff through. It's like, okay, we'll take what we need the rest of it's going. Well yeah, well that's that I mean that's really how Peter Dadamo ate ended up um, you know, writing Eat Right for Your Type. And I think what he did was brought us made us realise some people fail on yes, the diet that yeah, other people absolutely. thrive on. And I even watched um, a video about identical yeah. twins with completely yeah. different biomes. So again, one was mm -hmm. failing on the food and yeah. the other one was thriving. And also then they were talking about actually eventually being able to get an app in your phone mm -hmm. that will recognise what foods work for your biome. <laughs> So maybe technology but can it is help fascinating, but it's understand. such a complex thing. There is no such thing as one diet that suits everyone. You've got to find your own, as you said, Absolutely. it's that balance. But the thing is, see, with your gut, it changes. It's not a static thing. You can't say, oh, great, my gut microbiome's totally sorted because it changes on a, on a daily basis according to what you eat, what you drink, what your thoughts are. If you're out exercising, if you're getting sunlight, 
if the way you're breathing, all of these things, and it, it's a continually changing thing. So you've got to continually be addressing the balance. And the way, as I say, that you know is if you feel well and you don't have any gut. I mean, I'm I'm touch with incredibly fortunate. I don't have health issues, but if I do, I'll be making sure that I listen to what my body's trying to tell me. If I suddenly start getting joint aches or pains or anything else, I will be listening and I'll be I'll readjusting what I'm doing. Um, but again, I'm. Yes, well, that's yeah. what happened to me. I I be, I got um, postmenopausal mm. arthritis, which wasn't debilitating because I've you know like, I ignored it for a significant amount of time, and it was um, when it started waking mm. me up in my bed, I was like oh, yeah. you know, one shoulder. I was like, oh. and that that was that was when I actually thought, what are you doing? You know yeah. what to do here. And that was really why I got into the cold water. Mm -hmm. But the cold water alone isn't enough, no. you know, and that's wasn't for me. It might be for mm -hmm. some people. Um, in terms of the chronic pain, I also have to address my, my gut biome, my enzymes. So can we talk, right, I'm, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's talk about some probiotic bio, mm -hmm. snacks first before we look at and a, a, a putting something into a jar that can add some healthy bacteria into your food. Because so, what I want to do is I'm going to look and look at the questions people are, I can see a lot of right. stuff coming up and I want to make sure we cover everybody's queries. So can you talk about probiotic and from fermentation? What exactly well, is a probiotic? A probiotic is, right, that's a common one. A probiotic is something that is a live organism which is taken when taken in sufficient amounts, it confers a benefit on the host, right? So it's live bacteria uh, that, you, that you eat. So it's like probiotic capsules. People buy probiotic capsules and they take them and it's it's live bacteria that should, if they get through the acid, the acid of your stomach and your colon where they're needed, then they will re-establish and they will then confer a benefit on you. Prebiotic, on the other hand, is food source for the probiotics. So, for the, and that again is an absolute key thing. There is no point in people taking probiotics if they eat a totally crap diet because those probiotics are not going to do anything unless they've got a food source. And again, going back to it, that food source is fibre and phytochemicals and real food. So, there's no point in doing that either. That's not that doesn't work. Um, uh, but again, as I say, fermented foods fermented foods are essentially pre-digested. So whatever they are, say take for example sauerkraut, the bacteria, the natural bacteria on that cabbage, when you put salt and you, you create a salt brine, you create a selective environment for those bacteria, and those are lactobacillus bacteria. As I said, they're the sumo wrestlers of the bacterial world. They can survive acidic yeah, conditions. They will that. get through the acid of your stomach. And the amazing thing is, if you buy, if you're eating sauerkraut, you're eating the probiotics and the food source, which is prebiotic, because the cabbage is a food source. For them and as I say what happens is during the fermentation those bacteria break everything down and um, it's the same as if you make sourdough bread the bacteria break the hard stuff down which means that fermented foods are pre-digested so the bacteria have done a lot of the work which means when you eat them your body's got less work to do and those nutrients and again, in sauerkraut, the vitamin C content jumps up by a, a massive amount. Everything becomes more bioavailable, which means it's easy for your body to absorb it. So you eat something like that, your body's like, oh, thank God, there's something that we can use. There's it's sending reinforcements in to help with all the, the jobs that need done. Um, and again, but you don't need, the point of it is you don't need to eat fermented foods. What advice I would give, if people don't want to do fermented foods, that's fine. It can be like the missing link, though, to people's health, absolutely. But the other thing I would say is you have to be eating fibre. You need to be eating enough sources of fibre. That's the prebiotic thing. So, again, if you go back to the microbes that we've all got, we've all got a massive balance between good and bad. And, and the ones that are predominant are the ones that you're feeding. So what you can do is, in the absence of, oh, I have to go and get more and add more in, maybe what you should do first is feed the ones you've already got. You start to feed them with more fibre. They will increase in numbers and they will then start to benefit you. But some people have got whole groups of microbes missing, which is when then all, all the fermented foods come in because you're replacing. Like kefir, for example, which is a fermented dairy, 
that's the most probiotic food on the planet and that's the one that has the most potential to heal gut issues, uh, skin issues and other things because it can have up to 50 different probiotics in it. And those probiotics will get through your stomach acid into your colon and they will re-establish and do a job. Some of the other probiotics are what they call transient, so they pass through. And they'll do a job as they pass through, but they don't join the rest of them. They don't join the rest of them to sort of, you know, give you long-term benefits. So another thing is these things need to be done on a regular basis, like kombucha and stuff as well. As you drink them, they're doing incredible stuff. They're grabbing toxins out. They're doing all sorts of things. But you can't say, okay, I'm going to drink a bottle of kombucha, like, you know, once a month, and that's me sorted. Because these things are all, <laughs> but again, as we said, not to overwhelm anybody, yeah. but these are all additional things that you can do. But the, I, I, honestly, I would say that the most important thing that people can do, Lily, is to start to eat more diversity, try and eat seasonal, go to all these little, whatever, look at the five a day, the five a week, the five bargain things, whatever it is, because they're generally what, what stuff that's in season, and then start with that. But you need to be eating fibre, and if you're eating a lot of processed stuff, it means then vegetables become a wee side thing in your plate. It's nowhere near enough. You need to be eating loads. Mm -hmm. So we need the balance of the three yeah, and the absolutely. probiotic, yes. as we need in everything. Yeah. Okay. So can you now talk us into a healthy snack that we can make over these next couple of weeks that is going to be filling? and give us all, feed the yeah. gut bacteria. And right, so here's delicious. the thing is, like, if you only may have a snack, as you said as well, you want a protein and fiber and some good fats, right? So an oat cake, oat cakes are fantastic. They're soluble fiber, your gut microbes love them. Oat cakes, peanut butter, banana, some ground linseeds in the top. Um, oat cakes with a nice like, a bit of cream cheese, if you want to have that. Um, oat cakes and hummus. I mean, we love hummus. I mean, we have like dip of the day, we've got soup of the day. I, I make sourdough, so we will usually always get sourdough. Another fantastic snack is for a wee change is rye bread, right? You can buy the packs of organic rye bread. Now, most people, if you're buying the white bread, I mean, I, I used to work in war and as a bread people for a couple of years. I mean, I know how, the way that bread is produced these days, it's so bad for you. It's like cotton wool, it just gums up your whole gut. There's no goodness in it, and it's full of additives. If you buy organic rye, you can buy it, and it's it's not dear. It's like maybe one twenty or something for a packet. Rye is fantastic stuff because it's really high in protein. It's really high in fibre. It really fills you up, um, and it's not got loads of glyphosate residues in it that traditional bread would have because wheat is sprayed with glyphosate, which is a toxic weed killer, which is really bad for your gut microbes. So if you get some rye, and I make my own because I make more traditional rye sourdough, but even just to have a nice slice of rye bread with avocado on it or whatever dip or cream cheese or banana or whatever, an apple with some peanut butter on it or make these wee date balls. I, I, shared, I know you shared a recipe, well, I shared my recipe, which I uh, use a lot, which is just based in dates, a couple of bags of dates, blend them up. Then you're adding oats and coconut, nuts, seeds, you can add chocolate chips in. So these are all food sources for your gut bacteria. Uh, the other one that I make actually, it sounds a bit bizarre, but it's like beetroot um, bliss balls. And it's using vacuum pack beetroot, which is fantastic stuff. And again, that's a different source of fiber. Um, I make beetroot walnut dip, which is the most delicious thing ever. It's the easiest thing. Vacuum pack beetroot, you can buy it for 35 pence at home bargains. You blend it up with a wee hat and blender or something, put some walnuts in, um, some good, either rapeseed oil or olive oil. I, I ferment garlic, so I put fermented garlic and everything, that's my probiotics. A wee bit of salt, tahini, if anybody has tahini, uh, that's another go-to thing. I love tahini, it's alkaline, it's high calcium, medium. it makes things creamy, we add it to all our dips and all our dressings. So, I mean, oat cakes and, and some kind of dip, um, and, and a savoury rather than a sweet. And if you want to go down the sweet road, go for peanut butter, but then put banana on it. And as I say, you get these ground flax seeds. Flax seeds are brilliant. You've got back and back here, you love them. Yes. And you can buy them ready ground, um, you know, and like, again, all days, little anywhere, and just sprinkle them on. Or if you've got any other seeds, sesame seeds, or if you've got chia seeds or something. So instead of having one thing, just pile on some extra things. Yes, while I remember, because, 
you know, when I did my um, nutrition course, there was a lot of it sprouting oh, yeah. and soaking. And again, a bit like fermenting, you're starting yeah. off that process and you're allowing the, the, the seed or the nut or the plant to take, to move yeah. into the germination process, which will make it um, easier yeah. for you to digest as yeah. a wheatgrass, you know, before it gets the proteins come in and can make it more difficult yeah. to digest. So, I mean, I understand we're given a lot of information here for people. And if you don't mm -hmm. have a clue about this, it could, Pat's saying she's, um, <laughs> it sounds like mumbo jumbo. <laughs> And I can understand if you don't if you don't speak this language if you're not if you don't yeah. understand about um, mm -hmm. live foods, live enzymes, bacteria, and getting them from the plant mm -hmm. or the yeah. the cabbage or whatever into the body. But what we're really talking about here is balancing your gut. Mm -hmm. So keeping it simple. Janice has given us brilliant ideas for things that we can add in to create more, a, bit, a, a stronger probiotic um, healing effect. Now, can you, so we, we'll put the link to all your recipes because really peeps, you have to do your own research yeah. here as well. You know, we can give you as much as we possibly can and our perspective and passion on it, mm -hmm. but you then have to take the information and go and run and learn more mm -hmm. in any area. So Janice has got a YouTube channel. You've got an Absolutely. Instagram I'm on channel. Instagram, yeah. And I've my you... blog, I've got loads of recipes in my blog. But what I was going to say, even if people just make yeah. soup, if you're going to be doing them, if you've got a big pot of soup in the go, but don't just make the same one. Try different ones I shared. Yesterday, I think some yes. different soups that I make, that I've got lentils, that I've got chickpeas, that I've got leeks, they're all food sources for your gut. So again, if people are thinking this is too complicated, it's not. You have to eat fibre. That is a food for your gut microbes. You only get fibre from vegetables, lentils, pulses, beans, nuts, seeds, all of these things. So if you're not eating any of these things, then your gut bacteria are going to be starving and they're not going to be doing all the jobs like fighting inflammation and making B vitamins to give you energy or doing all of these things. The key thing is these guys are there, you need to feed them or they're not working on your behalf. And the other thing I think, you know, dairy yeah. gets a bad rap and primarily yes, because it's absolutely. pasteurized and the, way, the yeah. way we farm the cows. You know, I ordered a few years oh, ago, yeah. I ordered raw milk from England. I used to get it, Lily, milk. actually. Mm. Somebody used to give me raw organic milk and, and I need kefir. It's incredible. Uh -huh. And then you can make, you, you can ferment and make, and again, break down the proteins because, you know, there, there are people who get huge benefit oh, yes, sort of the year there um, for asthma yeah. and childhood allergies because obviously then their, their, their gut gets back yeah. the micro balance and the, the yeah. body will heal itself because it's always, always about that. So do you have a list of these snacks that you suggested and how to make them? In well, there's blog? tons of different things. My blog is all plant-based, right? So everything on my blog has got fiber in it. So everything on my blog is going to have a benefit for your gut. And I say it's not about you have to eat specific things. You just have to make sure that you're getting some fiber into your diet. You know, so yeah. uh -huh. and also somebody's asking here about bone broth, which I'm a big proponent yeah. of bone broth, particularly yeah. in the winter in Scotland. And if you have a leaky gut, then the yeah. gaps way of eating with bone broth, it, the, it douses inflammation because of the fats, yeah. etc. And it's and again, it's a, it's a traditional Scottish way of yeah. eating. Um, I'm just looking at all the um, the questions. So. Yes, I mean, you can easily re-listen to this live if you want to pick up some of the stuff again. I highly recommend that you do. Repetition, repetition is how we get and we embody the information. So if you've got questions, you can also just Google anything mm -hmm. that Janice has talked about. Go to her blog, go to her account and um, do mm -hmm. some research yourself. Now, can we talk about kombucha or and or yeah. sauerkraut. Well, the sauerkraut is the easiest one, Lily, because you don't need anything. If you make kombucha, you need a scoby and you need to get a scoby from someone who's already brewing it or you need to buy one. So sauerkraut is the easiest one. All you need is a cabbage, a, a hard green cabbage. And again, all these sell them like 35p or a, a red cabbage works as well um, and some salt. Uh, again, I have a, a YouTube uh, video and it's just on Nourished by Nature that t takes you step by step through how to make sauerkraut. And again, the thing is with um, 
fermenting people, I think, are a bit scared of fermenting stuff at home because it's bacteria that are involved and they think they're going to poison themselves. Well, actually, fermenting foods and making so that is like the healthiest way ever to preserve them because you start off with something that is good and you um, preserve it in salt and you end up with something that's way better. And what do we do? In our wisdom, we pasteurize stuff so we'll kill off all the good bacteria along with the bad and then we usually add chemicals in as well for good measure. So we'll start with something that's good and we'll end up with something that's worse. When you preserve things naturally, you end up with something that's way better. So all you need is a cabbage and, a, and some salt, not preferably not table salt, any natural salt, like um, any natural sea salt. Uh, table salt just tends to be pure sodium with chloride, whereas the pink Himalayan salts get loads of trace minerals in it, which just means then your sauerkraut's going to be better because you'll have trace minerals in it as well. And all you need to do is you get your cabbage, take one of the outer leaves off, cut it up, cut it into quarters, take the core out, shred it up as finely as you can, and then weigh it. And then what you want to do is add 2% salt to your cabbage, sprinkle the salt on. So if you've got a cabbage that's a kilogram when you've weighed it, Roughly speaking, a standard cabbage is going to be between 800 grams and a kilogram by the time you've shredded it all up. So roughly speaking, it's a, bit, it's a rounded tablespoon of salt is what you want to add, which is not that much salt. And people say, oh, it's, too, it's not that salty. I mean, it should taste a bit salty, but not massively salty. But you're, that's the key thing. You need to add enough salt. And what the, what the salt does is it creates a, an environment for the good bacteria, but the bad ones can't survive in a salt environment. So you're creating a selective environment. So you yeah. need to, what I tend to do is I add 2%. Right, a lot of the commercial kombucha uh, sauerkraut that you'll get, they're adding is 25 Your safe level is between 15 and 2.5% salt. So I just go for 2%. So if your cabbage is shredded up, weighs a kilogram, you add 20 grams of salt which is roughly a rounded tablespoon. Uh, and again, if you want to measure things, then weigh it and measure it, and then you know exactly. But years and years ago, people were not making sauerkraut and going away and weighing their cabbage and seeing how much salt. They were sprinkling the salt, massaging it in. The salt then pulls all the water out of the cell walls, and it creates its own brine. And the wee mantra for fermenting stuff is, under the brine and all is fine. As long as you've got your cabbage pressed underneath that brine, all the magic then starts to happen. These wee microbes get to work, start breaking everything down. They multiply and multiply and multiply, and you end up with something that has got trillions of these lactobacillus bacteria. And if you buy sauerkraut from the shops, and you'll find it a lot of the time in the supermarkets, if it's sitting out in the shelf, it will have been pasteurized, which means all the live bacteria are dead. So if you're buying it for probiotic benefits, you won't get any, but you will still get the benefit of the cabbage, obviously. Um, but again, if you make your own, it's the easiest thing. And then what you need to do is to make sure you leave it at room temperature for about two to three weeks. And then once it's fermented, you can try it. And if you like it, you can put it in your fridge and it keeps for months. I've got a fridge full of all sorts of different ferments. You can add a grated apple in if, you, if you've got apples. Apple, caraway is really nice. You can do red cabbage with apple. You just add it all in. But again, I'd say to people, just check out my YouTube and it takes you step by step through uh, what you have to do. Yes, we'll put all your links for people to yeah. do their own research and um, yeah. find the recipes. That's fantastic. And it's so interesting, the pasteurisation, because one of the big reasons is when you take all the, the bacteria out, the, it, the yeah, shelf life's longer. Yeah. We're so, yeah. We're so dumb. It's like you've just taken all the good yeah. out of it. A bit like yes. all the wheat, you've taken all the fiber out to make it. Yeah. And bleach it. I mean, it's and that, crazy. Oh, we have I was going to say, when you go back to years food, and years ago when we started refining things for like the posh rich people, and they, you know, the, 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 the poor folks still had all just the unprocessed stuff, and the rich people started trying, you know, all the process. They were the ones that all started getting chronic disease because they weren't eating enough fiber because they were refining everything and thinking that was better take all the, you know, the, the fibre out of it, it's, it's all wrong. Um, we've, we've got it totally wrong, we really have. And again, as, as you know, in Scotland, we've got one of the worst health records in the world. We have, and if you look at what most people are eating on a daily basis, it's no wonder. And again, if you look back to the fact that, you're, you know, most of your health comes from your gut, I'm actually surprised, to be quite honest, that people are actually able to, um, you know, function at all, uh, considering the, the food that a lot of people eat. 
Well, the, the body really mm -hmm. is remarkable, but I think the big problem is people have forgotten what it's like to feel alive yeah. and energetic and excited. We've become kind of, we're yeah. getting through the days, you know, and, and we're, we're, we're uh, the way I see it and for Scotland's wild medicine is we're part of this phenomenal energy, ele electromagnetic field, and we have taken ourselves mm -hmm. completely away from yeah. that free, infinite mm -hmm. energy source. And we haven't, we didn't even realize we did it unconsciously and mindlessly. Um, and we now need to, you know, I, my big, big thing is um, the mental health of our young ones. I, it's, you know, the suicide rates, it, 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 it breaks my heart to think that I'd rather not be here. And, and, you know, and it can be as simple as um, plant medicine and all of it's incredibly powerful for that can help mm -hmm. kids reconnect. Um, anyway, we are on it, Janice. We are getting the word out because it all has to start with having the, the right information. And even then, you know, you may not want to change your but diet. But it's a I choice. Mean, it's, I mean, it is a choice, Lily, but that's the thing. If you've got the information, you can make a conscious choice then. And again, we have to eat and drink, so you might as well make a better choice as make a bad choice. If you think to yourself, well, I can eat exactly. that cheap white bread or I can buy wholemeal bread, go for the wholemeal one, that's a better choice. But again, it's not to overwhelm anybody. It's like, do things in a way that you can sustain. Do one thing, add some seeds, some nuts, get some flax seeds, add them. If you have porridge in the morning, add some flax seeds to it. You know, put some fruit in it, grate an apple in it, add some cinnamon, these kind of things. And you know, that can make a massive difference. Yeah, yeah. They're alive. Uh -huh. And again, as I say, it's going back to eating as many different sources of fibre. And my game, which is how many sources of fibre can you get into whatever it is you're eating. Um, you know, so I mean, it is, it's quite a fun game for me. But I mean, that's what, I mean, I, I just love food. So I mean, I'm, I'm obsessed with it. I, I do love food. Food's a big deal to me. Um, but again, it keeps me well and I feel incredibly well. So, you know. Yeah. Can, can we talk to sourdough? Because I have a feeling a lot of people are eating bread <laughs> that's yeah. called sourdough and i'm not entirely yeah. sure it's um mm -hmm. it's as healthy um and i suppose it's like everything you get really good yeah. and you get really mm -hmm. you know but again the whole food industry's jumped in that because that's like a sourdough is like artisan stuff you can charge more money and a lot of the sourdough that you're buying I mean, I make one sourdough all the time. Sourdough is fantastic stuff. I love it. I love bread. I couldn't be without it. It's fantastic. But I make, if, if true sourdough bread is made with three ingredients, flour, water, salt, that's it. And your sourdough starter is just flour and water that you have nurtured and, and you know, got all these fantastic bacteria and yeast. So a sourdough bread is one that has only got three ingredients. Or you can add seeds and things, which is fine, but... It's only got, it's not got added yeast in it, but a lot of the stuff that you buy in the shops, they might add some sourdough starter, but they're still adding yeast and they're still adding other stuff and they're not allowing it the time. And with sourdough, it's the time. You go back to how things were done traditionally. Those bacteria need time to break down the gluten, to break down the phytic acid, to release all the minerals so that you can absorb it. And if you're not allowing it time, and as I say, I know, because I worked with Warburton's the bread people for a couple of years when I was doing food research, and they said to me that the whole process changed in the 60s, and it was all to speed everything up for more money. So more salt got added, more yeast got added for flavour, additives, flour improvers, all these things got added because time is money, and that's what happens. And when you do make sourdough, it's, it's giving these microbes the time that they need to do all the cool stuff. And that's the thing, people are time short. Oh, I don't have time, I don't have time to do it. But then, you know, what? You know, for me, my health is a priority. So I will make it a priority to make sure that with the knowledge that I have, that I'm nurturing my own gut microbiome uh, and by making good choices. And I'm not saying that I don't ever make bad choices. Of course I do. Um, but it's the balanced thing. The majority of food I eat, is, you know, is good stuff. Absolutely. Somebody is asking here about is raw milk yep. beneficial? Yes, it's yep. illegal in Scotland, and yes, you can mm -hmm. get it delivered from England. And you know, but again, there is no one no. size fits all. And you dairy can be a you know make people yeah. congested, etc. You need to really check yeah. in with your body and feel if you're 
resonates. But again, all you're doing, like exactly you're saying there, you're allowing mm -hmm. time to help the breakdown and the multiplication or whatever for the yeah. for the body. And and that's exactly what you do with raw milk. It is amazing. You just leave it, it will become kefir, you leave it, it'll become yogurt, yeah. you leave it, it'll become cheese. It is and you know, I I um worked well volunteered in a biodynamic farm yeah. in Ecuador and we had I would just go out in the morning and pick all the vegetables. I mean, it was a nutrition of heaven. But I'll tell you, feeding 12 people with only vegetables, we needed the, the, we, yeah. we got raw milk from the cows and the goats. And I could make lots of um, delicious yeah. cheeses and stuff from that. So, you know, we the animal products, um, and particularly if you're, move, if you're just starting to become aware, you know, it's, it's yeah. getting quality. It's understanding the, the processes that these foods go through and how they affect our body. Because this phenomenal farm that we mm. are um, needs to be tended like any farm. And that is the thing, you know? as I say, we're all different. So, so what works for one, and go with your, I mean, we all have gut intuition, that, but half of us don't even listen to it. So if you go by, as you say, what, what is it? If, go by how you feel, and I'm going to eat something. If your body's telling you eat it, then have it. And not everyone suits everybody. I, I'm not a massive fan of dairy. never really have been, to be honest. But I was lucky enough to get raw organic milk as well. Last year, when one of the ladies who came to all my workshops got it sent up from England, raw organic milk is one of the most nutritious things on the planet. And if you then put your kefir grains in and you make kefir from raw organic milk, it is out, it's incredible stuff because it is packed full of live enzymes, all sorts of beneficial bacteria. And the reason, again, that the milk gets pasteurised is to kill off potential pathogenic bacteria, but it's killing off all the live enzymes that help you to digest it and all the good bacteria that you would be having. So it's like a dead product, if you like as opposed to one that's teeming with life. Yeah. So if you get, yeah. Absolutely. It's a, Absolutely. And you know, I was just watching a video before um, about this indigenous tribe and they used to give um, mushrooms to, to the reindeer and then they yeah. would drink the reindeer <laughs> urine because they were, what they were doing was they were using the reindeer's body to take all the, yeah. the toxicity well, that's out. Cool. And then they were just getting- That's not fair to the reindeer, <laughs> but I know I get that. <laughs> But you know, I mean, but we're doing that anyway. I mean, the, the, if the cow is is um, uh, yeah. fed and you know farmed, or the way that we were meant to be, and not being fed a lot of food yeah. it was never designed to get, then of the milk will was. be. You know, these gifts that we get from the animals um, can yeah, be really, really powerful. But it's our kind of lack of respect and using them for our greater good with it, absolutely. No That's the thing. Everything's changed, yeah. Lily. Yeah. Nothing. The thing is, traditional processes worked, but a lot of it now is it's all about speeding things up. Is how can we make more money? How can we do? It? And and it's all to the detriment of our own health. If you go back to traditionally. Any people, it doesn't matter, you know, if, we, if you eat your traditional diet with food that's grown locally, with real food that's not been adulterated, that's not been processed, that's not had all sorts of additives added to it and all the good stuff taken away, then you'll have much better health, you know. Right, absolutely. Right, well, I think that's a very, very good place for us to end this because we could, we've been on for nearly an hour now and we've, you've given a lot of incredible information. If there will, you can look over yeah. the questions as well, Janice. Oh, well. Have a look and we can answer. Everything. We will put all the links on for you. This video will go onto YouTube as well. You can watch it again, and the, if you just go into Heal Scotland's videos. Um, so, and thank you again to everybody who has mm -hmm. joined us and who's joining the intermittent fasting challenge and owning yeah. their power and making good choices. We really appreciate um, everybody's um, energy and. Um, we will be back. Um, I'm going to I'm going to be come, going live on Wednesday with um, habit changing no, techniques good. and letting the past. And Janice, we'll be, we'll talk about a, a, a challenge, a yeah. probiotic challenge, and we'll get some <laughs> recipes stuff. going. Right. Okay, thanks a million for all your incredible advice and your passion. You're and um, and thanks for giving no us your time. Okay, morning. see ya. Bye. Huge gratitude.